Yes, please. Good afternoon. Please have your seat. So you are Ravi Kumar. Yes, sir. From Rajasthan. Yes, sir. Okay. Tell us about yourself. So I'm from Malwa district of Rajasthan. That we have gone through. Yes, yes. So geography, did you have some special interest in geography? Sir, back in the school days I did have interest. Uh, ah. And sir, while preparing, while choosing for the subject, I saw the subject to be more close to me. As okay. To so what are the geographical fe uh, features of Rajasthan? Prominent features? So Rajasthan is a very, very geographically rich region. Uh, it has uh, regions which are arid, some arid region or and a little bit of region which have good amount of rainfall also. Uh, mm -hmm. It has uh, various topographical features including uh, mountains which are Ravli ranges. Mm -hmm. Also it has uh, the, the Ganga plain of desert island, mm -hmm. desert region and uh, the rivers are also, there are quite good number of rivers in Rajasthan. However, most of them do not have sufficient uh, water for the basin. So it is very rich. Hmm. Okay. Is there any change so far as rainfall pattern is concerned for Rajasthan in the past say 10-20 years? There is a change sir. Uh, what, what, in what direction? Uh, sir, it is observed in most of the districts of Bundi and Karoli that uh, they, are, they were flooded last year which was very unpleasant, uh, which was very uh, not precedented. Uh, so sir, the monsoon pattern is changing. The region which is lying in south and southwestern part is getting more rainfall as as you more less than usual, and the western part of Rajasthan is having quite less rainfall, and the drought frequency over there has increased. Sir. Okay, you did civil engineering. Yes, sir. So why you didn't go for that prof uh, profession? Why you prefer to come to for the civil services? So as I was doing my graduation, I realized that uh, I am a person who likes diversity in the job and uh, then I, so I come, up or come across social services <coughs> my, through my parents, my seniors and I saw that this as this field has enormous amount of opportunities uh, where I can be part of a policy implementation in the earlier stages and in the later stages, stages I can also formulate the policies and I can have, have some say In earlier stages how, how, how you, uh, you are a part of this policy making? In earlier stages of the career a civil servant is supposed to do work in the field Sir, in early stages, uh, I'm supposed to be the part of the policy implementation, which are the policies that are yes, there. Yes, not policy making. Yes, yes sir. Uh, policy making would come at the later stage of my uh, career if I were to choose you as an servant. So, sir, it suppose that, suppose sir. suppose you get selected, yes, sir. and you reach to the secretary level post, and you are posted as a secretary for the welfare of SC STs yes, in sir. Rajasthan. So, what will uh, what will be a focus areas for making policy in favor of uh, for development of uh, scheduled tribes in Rajasthan? So, my focus area would be uh, would be the education for the SCST people community and uh, what is the education standard of Mina community? Sir, uh, specifically Mina community has done a little bit better. Uh, as far as education is concerned, little bit or far ahead of other tribes. Sir, it is ahead of other tribes. Sir. It is. Ahead so, what are the other tribes? So, there are certain other tribes also, for example. Which part of Rajasthan? Sir, mostly the tribal uh, community uh, are, are living in western and west, uh, southwestern part of Rajasthan, yes. including Barmi. So, so while making preparing policy for the for the tribes, would you? Segregate minas from the other tribes, or you will make a policy which is applicable to all. Similarly, would you go for uh, uh, positive discrimination? Sir, I would go for positive discrimination. However, I would not go for the complete exclusion of mina community. 
I would still try to uh, include those people who have not been seen uh, or not seen development at that level, at that much level. There are certain section of people in Meena community also who have done well, but still there are probably people who are lacking behind. So I will include them, and a major focus would also be to those community which have not gained much much uh, development. Okay, you opted for in politics and international affairs. Uh, sorry, sir, I don't sorry. Sorry, sorry, geography. 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 Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Hmm. So, I would like to know about this uh, thrust of China for one belt, one road. What is that, and why India opposed to it? So, one belt and one road scheme, which is also recently currently known as the Belt and Road Initiative is China's plan to expand its uh, road infrastructure across uh, the Central Asia, Southern part of Asia and also try to reach <coughs> to Europe. Uh, India's, uh, India's main objection to this is uh, the, in the China's, this, this particular project is passing through the Indian territory of, uh, Indian territory which is currently in Pakistan occupied Kashmir. We have seen uh, that it passes through Balochistan region also. Uh, not so Balochistan, the Gilgitistan region. So, sir, that is one of our concerns. Another concern is that uh, the way the China is implementing its policy is a little bit aggressive. It is trying to fund the, uh, it is trying to give loans to the to the countries, and once these those countries are un unable to repay the loan, uh, they are pressurizing. They are they are a little bit more aggressive toward them. But how is India concerned with that? See, no, it is not taking any loan from China. It is other countries are taking loan from them. What is our concern with always this road initiative? Sir, I agree with you. India is not taking my loan from China. But uh, if you will, the, the countries that are taking loan from China happen to be a near nearby country. For example, Bangladesh had taken some Bangladesh uh, sorry uh, Sri Lanka had taken some loan and it could not repay it. So, so for 99 years, uh, uh, Sri Lanka has to lease back uh, lease Hamad Port. So sir, this definitely poses a national issue for India also. It's growing influence to this region, so like that. So is there any ocean which is, no, which is named by a country? Sir, it is Indian Ocean. Indian sir. Ocean. The only no ocean, which is yes, the only sir. country which has got this distinction. So it has been proud of India, sir. Yeah, and now China is intruding into that pearl, string of pearls. What are the spots, string of pearls, where uh, China is making inroads? There are regions, uh, as you mentioned, so regions would be Sri Lanka. All this is also coming under Chinese influence repeatedly. China is also attacking the eastern part of uh, eastern coast of Africa, and uh, so Myanmar is, as we have seen recently, Myanmar is also extending its, uh, its hand towards China's Belt and Road Initiative. So, so these are very critical areas of China's Belt and Road Initiative. As a civil engineer, I would like to know the construction of roads. Yes, sir. Which is constructed in a plain area like Rajasthan. Yes, sir. In a rainy area like, uh, say, Brahmaputra region of Assam. Yes, sir. And the hill regions of Arunachal. What would be the change in specifications to meet to the requirement of these areas? So these three regions have specific uh, problems. For example, if we are talking about Rajasthan. Then, uh, if you are talking about Rajasthan, then the sub subsoil stratum is not uh, strong enough to hold uh, the bitumen pavement that might come up above it. So, the major issue in Rajasthan would be uh, would be to provide a good foundation in Assam because there is too much rain happening. So, the time that bitumen might uh, be required to settle uh, without interruption of much water uh, would be very less. Uh, the water to cement content will also will, will be very uh, fluctuating because uh, we have seen that uh, Assam is very a uh, very high rainfall range region and if we are talking about uh, hill sir it poses uh, another level of uh, problems for example the orientation very orientation of road is affected in plain areas what we can do is uh, we can make a few adjustment to the road uh, road alignment but in hill areas we have to follow the hill contours that are there so sir, the problems are varied and especially if a hill is, uh, is uh, located in the colder region like Ladakh, there sir, the bitumen does not uh, uh, does not give sufficient desire, such serviceability and durability in those regions. So, sir, so what, what is water bound macadam? So water bound macadam is, uh, is 
one of the two most pop, more popular way of our, of pay, of payment of the uh, the upper course of the payment uh, sir the, the other one is the wet mix macadam but sir i could not uh, uh, say what is the difference between these two but in civil engineering they must have taught you about these things yes, yes sir they didn't taught me sir i also uh, learn about it however at the moment i am no as compared about. to bitumen uh, a lot of cement road is being uh, recommended So, what are the advantages of both of these technologies? Which would you prefer for Indian conditions? Sir, uh, both of these uh, technologies, one is bitumen technology, another one is the rigid pavement of of cement. They have specific uh, uh, benefits and certain drawbacks. For example, in the flexible pavement, uh, we can provide it in uh, in those areas where acceleration is more, where there is more turning. But if we are talking about uh, a long straight road where the desire is more speed, then we should definitely we should go with the, the cement road. Otherwise, the tire will burst out if the if the speed is very Friction high. Friction is too road. much in uh, cement. Friction, road. yes. Sir. So, is it safe to have it on the national highways, sir? Uh, national highways these days these days national highways, yes, sir. It is used largely bitumen pavement only. but uh, we are trying to make modification on the line of express way which have started using composite road where so in this indo us relationship you know, mr trump is coming who yes, do you sir. think is benefiting more out of this relationship sir both the nations are benefiting however india would be i think sir uh, india would be on the higher side uh, sir so what are the benefits for india sir one benefit would be the higher the definite the frequency with which the indian prime minister and the us president are meeting is increasing many fold in the last 8 months only we have met five times so how is it beneficial to india meeting the president does not benefit india yes how is it going to benefit what are the benefits for india so one possible benefit is uh, i can think of is india can complete its uh, tried of foundational agreement that uh, us done with does with any country India has already signed uh, Limoa, uh, Limoa and Comcasa agreement, and the remaining one is BECA agreement. So I think, sir, uh, also we have seen that recently the US official have said that there might be some talk regarding that last agreement. What so, is the benefit for America? So uh, specifically talking about America and for that also Trump administration, it is about to go for election this year at the end. so popularity in india would definitely have very good implications in the us so uh, i would say so election is going to be affected because of this relationship so i would not say they will be affected however there would be a general opinion among the uh, citizen of the us which might come to a uh, citizens of the us or indian diaspora sir uh, i would say both of them would be having uh, the opinion your opinion because indian diaspora definitely we have direct link with them and also among the us citizens which they know the importance of the of indian market uh, the how important is indian market to the uh, products and the services of us so sir i think both of both of those citizens should be involved militarily how is india going to benefit because china is a big force which is coming up yes sir so in what way it is benefiting us so militarily sir as i said uh, uh, the potential to sign the third agreement This is is very uh, unique, sir. To be specific. Okay, thank you, uh, Miss Omesh. <clears throat> As a student of geography, uh, tell me about three prominent geomorphological features of Rajasthan. Sir, uh, one of the three prominent geomorphological Rajasthan areas from Rajasthan one would be uh, the mountains. the mountains and the the basin of the river uh, associating with them then the second one would be the arid region the uh, arid region with sandy soil towards the western part and hadoti region is a little bit of plateau part which is the extension of the peninsular plateau and uh, as an administrator how would you utilize your knowledge of civil engineering and geography in delivery of uh, services or Yes, sir. government services. Can you can you show a link? Add added benefit to you. 
sir if i talk about uh, the benefit of uh, civil engineering in my administration uh, if, if i were to give on the charge of the administration then it can be a very uh, it can be very useful i i being a civil engineer i understand what are the uh, what are, what it takes to build a road a bridge uh, a bridge a railway railway construction so that would be on my positive side to understand the, uh, from nitty gritties of these issues how much money should be allocated uh, and how, what is the level of contract that we should be making uh, also the uh, we, we study about uh, various issues of hydrology water so it is very important to understand sir this will also be augmented by my geographical study because i understand i, I read about the drainage system i read about the agricultural issues of any particular issue so they both will integrate each other and will integrate uh, and augment my uh, my uh, my administration tell any negative impacts of international migration sir, inter uh, sir international migration specifically the forced migration has an impact on the receiving country on to towards which the exodus has been directed uh, what is that, that impact what can be that impact sir one very prominent impact that can be happening is uh, the pressure on the existing uh, resources because sir we have seen that uh, with the growth of population most of the countries are reaching their optimum population level and uh, if they are reaching there and the exodus comes at this time then we uh, we can feel that the pressure on the existing resources can increase can you name any recent legislation by government on the basis of uh, taking into consideration migration yes sir uh, recently uh, we have seen that nrc has been implemented uh, was mm -hmm. being implemented it's in not legislation the act which was passed by parliament sir uh, recent act passed by parliament of the ca executive amendment act uh, this can have a little bit of repercussion on the resources uh, of the of uh, specific regions like assam also thank you thank you sir thank you or uh, abhi First of all, on geography, what is the southern tip of India? Which is the southern most part? The so southern most part is uh, Indra Point, which is located in Andaman and Nicobar on the north border. Is it still there, or was washed away in the tsunami? Sir, I'm not sure of it. Okay. Sure so update yourself. Right. <coughs> you, you have given the first choice as IAS officer, right? Yes. Sir. Tell me three core values and IAS officers as a district magistrate. If you put it yourself, and imagine in that chair, you yes. must possess on the first day. If you think that with that ability, you would go to lead the district. Three core abilities or traits. So three core abilities would be very good level of human interaction, peer public interaction. Second would be high level of energy throughout the day. Uh, we have seen uh, some of the uh, some of the IAS officers which have done brilliantly well if they are very good energetic. and third would be having very good level of tolerance because not everything goes according to the plan sometimes plan do uh, do shift from their uh, actual vision so if that happen you should be accommodative enough and evolving enough to go for the next one situationally aware situationally aware okay. yes sir thank Five. you can you just take this thank you sir other than drinking water from this yes sir tell me five ways you can use it imagine five second or 10 seconds and tell us Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Sir, uh, five ways to use this is it has water. So, sir, what I can do is this is good amount of water uh, to irrigate around around one meter square of uh, one meter square area in agricultural productivity using micro irrigation. So, one would be there. another one would be sir i can use this plastic bottle recycle it and reuse it to my another uh, to any other thing uh, third would be sir this plastic can be used in roads uh, being a civil engineer uh, i understand that uh, the plastic can increase the stability uh, not the stability the strength of the road if we use in very good amount so those were the three and sir the banner that we are having uh, on this on this bottle sir i think if we say uh, we can collect it and we can resend it so that uh, to the company Uh, so that it does not have to use another level of pl more plastic so to produce the same amount of banner fifth uh, the fifth would be sir once this bottle is empty uh, once this bottle would be empty this can also be used for the designing and aesthetic purpose in my own house or any other house this rose you mean to yes sir this is okay. an example of this. link up here yeah. 
very nice last question if i get 30 second more you are a guitarist yes sir right so tell me how, how many types of guitar for which guitar you play sir i play acoustic guitar however there are uh, two broad classification of guitar one is electrical guitar another one is semi uh, it is acoustic guitar a little slight uh, uh, classification if we are also going to it it is called semi acoustic guitar in acoustic guitar what happens is we have uh, the sound is being naturally amplified by the wooden body but in electric guitar when we struck uh, a string it produces the electrical uh, impulses you sing also sir i sing but uh, it is hard for the people to hear to that any classical <laughs> <laughs> any classical temp temptations so you say uh, sir i do i am indian you organize a cultural fest and you were accommodation in charge in that yes sir. so you must have interacted with a lot of people who were from cultural background yes, probably sir. yes you have any test of music or any classical you know in india when you go to a Uh, district level probably you have to amalgamate yourself with the culture of india yes. music is very important and you have a positive strength of guitarist yes sir. so in that contest you and, and you said the score competencies of the dm the first one the human interaction interaction yes, okay sir. so yes. that connects with the people if you are musical minded yes, in sir. india it is very important you know and you have that trait so i am just asking that question yes sir uh, during my culture fest also sir in that uh, culture fest singer named mr shan he came and i interacted with him i happened to ask him um, asking about way from how did he started he mentioned about his struggles during the initial days so it is very important because uh, music is very very important because it actually vibrates the ethos of india and the music because it knows no boundary it can be the prime unifying force uh, there is something called hawaiian guitar So there is a Hawaiian guitar. Sir. We probably forgot that. Yes, sir. Continue. Thank you, sir. Yes, Thank sir. you. Over there. Yeah. Tell us about your three weaknesses. Sir, can I take a moment? For sure. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, my very first weakness would be uh, it is hard for me to follow up. Follow up. proper diet plan uh, i usually find myself new uh, to uh, towards uh, uh, the fast food uh, second uh, would be the so second would be uh, that i do not i am a shy person i find it is a little bit hard to interact to the new stranger people however with uh, some amount of time with them i do get comfortable with it and uh, so third would be uh, as sir my uh, daily routine of sleeping and making up is also very very is not on line with proper schedule i sleep sometimes very late and i wake up sometimes very uh, late also so sir so what are your plans to overcome these three when you get into the services naturally since you are conscious yes sir you must have also thought of ways and means to get over get out of it get over it sir i have done few things uh, in order to help myself to come out of these issues so first thing uh, for example if i take about uh, my daily schedule of waking up and sit and sitting down sir i have integrated my daily work with the routine of my waking up i study so uh, i wake up early in the morning in order to take three or four four hours of studying right in the morning hour itself so if that has to be the priority of mine i have to wake up so that i made myself compulsory over there so if i am waking up early that also mean that i will be uh, dozing uh, somewhat around 10 to 11 pm also so i am making that training over there and uh, sir they talking about my diet plan sir i i used mobile application uh, to for to uh, and i used to register every time i i used to uh, i i used notepad and register every time i consume fast food however that has not shown its uh, full uh, full potential back yes sir i i go back to that so answer thank you to that so you are getting into a service which is not just one day one week one month fair yes sir going to be 30 odd years maybe 35 years yes sir so you have some ever thought of crystal gauging your career progression or life progression sir i want to think about uh, my life progression in this field yeah. uh, sir during the uh, middle and the later part of my my job i would like to do something towards uh, the educational side towards the educational field and specifically of women education because uh, sir i have see i i feel i felt uh, reading newspaper that uh, women education is really very important and it is the single most uh, 
stopping point for India society to grow. So, sir, I think I will make myself more uh, more available towards the women education. And sir, health can health will be my priority also. But that would be my second priority. First priority would definitely be the women education. So, what will you do to year around that? <coughs> So there are a now you are going to be not a talking man, an action man, as a bureaucrat. So action man is known by his action. So what actions you propose to take to drive situation to your desired advantage? Sir, uh, there are few things that I would try. Sir, I would I would definitely do. Uh, sir, there are already few uh, bureaucrats who have done amazing field work in the field of women education. I would like to understand and to study what they have done. Who are those bureaucrats? Can you name a few? So there was one IPS officer, one IS officer from Telangana, uh, sir. However, I do not recall his name. What he has done is he has uh, he has integrated the women education, women education and nutrition in his own district. And because of that, there is a girl named Purnima. Because of the empowerment that that she got because of his work, 